Okay, this is a tutorial on how to set up Fusion 360 to do plasma cutting as well as the steps included to create your design and then export it for the plasma cutter. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to open up Fusion 360 um, and we've got a new untitled uh, workspace here and we want to double check to make sure that we are in the right units. So if I click down on document settings, um, I'm going to come over here and it says units, millimeters, uh, and for working with the plasma cutter, I want to work in inches. And so if I click this little uh, pencil and paper icon, I can come over here and change our active units to uh, inches and click OK. The other thing I want to make sure uh, is over here, I should see that the Z axis is pointed up. Uh, that's very important. Uh, if for some reason that is not up, uh, then what we can do uh, is we can come over here to our little profile, go to preferences. We'll give that a moment to uh, actually kind of load up and you should see this default modeling orientation should be Z up. Um, if it's Y up, then you need to change it. But if you see that the Z is facing up and down here, uh, then you are in good shape and you don't need to change anything there. The next thing that we want to do uh, is we want to create the tool uh, that is going to be uh, used with our plasma cutter. So we'll come on over here to the design and come into our manufacturing environment. Uh, and here's where we're going to kind of visit once we're ready to start our uh, developing our tool. Uh, but we need to kind of develop the uh, plasma cutter as a uh, tool that can be used in Fusion 360. So we're going to click down here on Manage. We're going to go to Tool Library. Okay. And in here, we see there's lots of different options over here. We're going to come down and click on Library. Uh, and it may say no data here, and that's okay. If we click on this little plus icon, it's going to let us add a new tool. At this point, we want to come over and add a plasma cutter. Okay. We're going to give it a name. Uh, the name of our plasma cutter is the Razor Cut 45A. For cutter, we want to make sure that it is set to plasma cutter. We're going to change our unit to inches. And we're going to change our nozzle diameter. Uh, and nozzle diameter here is going to be one inch. And the kerf width, that's the amount of material that's going to be taken away every time we cut. We're going to set to 0 0.055. Uh, and you want to make sure that, again, as you're putting these values in, make sure that, you know, if yours is in a different order, make sure that your nozzle diameter is one inch, your kerf width is 0 0.055. Uh, you wouldn't want to kind of accidentally uh, swap those around. We click on over to uh, cutting data. Uh, we can change our cutting feed rate. Um, and in that case, we're going to change that to uh, 150 uh, inches per minute. Um, our lead in feed rate is actually going to be a little bit less than that. Uh, we're going to change that to, oh, actually, no, that is going to be 150 inches per minute. Um, so going to double check that from our good friend Chris. Lead in feed rate is going to be 50 inches per minute. Um, good thing we checked. Thank you, Chris. So we're going to change that to 50 inches per minute, uh, and our lead out feed rate is going to be 150 inches per minute. So you should see 150, 50, and 150 there. Okay. Mm -hmm. At that point then, we can click Accept, uh, and we've got our new tool set up. So we can go ahead and close down this. The other thing that we want to do is we're going to load up what's called a post-processor library. Um, these are kind of the instructions that Fusion 360 will use in order to turn whatever file we create here today uh, into something that can be used uh, on our very specific uh, plasma cutter. So if we go to uh, lingwiresystems.com slash downloads, and I will uh, share this link uh, in the description of the video, uh, we can scroll all the way down uh, and we will find that there is a section called Fire Control Post Processors. Uh, we want to use this specific one, the Fusion 360 Post V1.6, uh, because we do have a crossfire with a Z axis. So we're going to click on that to download it. We'll come back over here. Um, we're going to click on this G1, G2 post process tab. If we click on that. Um, and over here for post, it doesn't have a post processor selected yet. So we're going to click this little open library. Uh, and we need to import one. So we'll click this import. And we'll navigate to our downloads folder and pick that uh, file that we just downloaded. And that's going to give us our, our post processor for the fire control plasma. So we can click select, uh, and we're not quite ready to uh, post process anything, so we can kind of click cancel for now. We'll come back to that. Okay, so at this point we have completely configured Fusion 360 to work with our, our plasma cutter, uh, but now we need to actually do a design. 
So we're going to come back over to this manufacturer workspace and we're going to come up to design. And the thing that we're going to be making today uh, is a four inch uh, designed medallion. Uh, so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to start off by creating a sketch. So that's going to kind of define our uh, workspace and some basic geometry. So I'll click on this button over here uh, and I have to select what plane that I want to work in. And you'll notice that there's these three kind of yellowish orange uh, rectangles. And it's really important that we select the right one because we want to make sure that we're cutting on the kind of the flat plane of the plasma cutter. And so I'm going to choose this bottom, uh, you know, uh, rectangle right here. I don't want to choose this one or this one. I want this bottom one. So I'm going to click on that. Uh, and then the next thing that I can do uh, is to start creating the geometry of my medallion. Well, most medallions are circles. So I'm going to click on this center diameter circle tool. I'm going to come right to the middle and I'm going to drag out and I could try to kind of get this exactly right, but that can be really tricky. So I'm just going to type the number four on my uh, keyboard and hit enter, and now I have a four inch circle. So that's that's pretty good so far. Um, I'm gonna take a moment to go ahead and save. So I'll save this, and I'm gonna call this a plasma cut test, but you should call yours something fancy. Okay, so we've kind of saved, but we wanna kind of make this a little bit more interesting, um, have a little bit better geometry. So for this activity, we're actually gonna be using an awesome website called The Noun Project. And so if you go to thenounproject.com, I'll also link it down in the description. Uh, it's going to take you to a website where we can get access to lots of kind of ready to go art. Um, so you will want to kind of create an account. Um, so it's a free so you, account. So you just need to give it your information and go ahead and log in. And at this point, then we need to uh, find some sort of uh, icon that we want to cut. Um, so I'm going to say I want something relatively uh, simple. So I'm going to click planet. And we'll kind of see what options are available to us. All right. So at this point, I see lots of different things that I could choose. Uh, the name of the game for the plasma cutter is you want to choose something that has very, very simple geometry. Uh, things that are very complicated like this or even this like kind of like hand drawn looking one. Uh, these are not going to create kind of really good cuts. I'm usually looking for something that has just a lot of really solid basic geometry. Um, and so I'm going to kind of keep looking through here because the end of the day, this is all going to kind of get cut out. Uh, so maybe something like this is pretty good. Something where just, there's just a big giant black shape. Um, I'm going to keep looking around, see if I can find something maybe even a little bit better. So this, this kind of has islands. So again, not exactly what I'm looking for. Let's keep looking. I just want a big kind of solid black shape. Here we go. I like this one. So again, we might imagine that these kind of these areas get cut out. They're just going to fall away. Uh, and so I like that, you know, this is uh, going to work well for our plasma cutter. So if I click on stencil or sorry, if I click on get this icon and go to basic download. So and click continue. I want to go ahead and download the SVG version of this. So this is already a vector format. And so once it's downloaded, I can come back into fusion. I can come into insert, insert SVG, and I want to insert from my computer. And I can see that in my downloads folder, it's got this file right here ready to go. Now you can see that as it imported, it came in really, really big. Um, in fact, too big for my workspace. Uh, and so at this point, what I want to do is I want to drag this little kind of half moon shape here. And as I drag it up and to the left, it's going to shrink that a little bit. And I can use this big square here to kind of position it inside my, uh, my four inch circle. And so I don't want it to be too small. I don't want it to be too big. Just like Goldilocks, I want it to be just right. I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit. Okay. And that looks okay. So at this point then I can click okay. And that should place it in there. Now, as we zoom in, uh, we see that we're, we've got some of this extra text here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kind of highlight that text and hit delete. We don't want any of that in our design. Okay, so at this point, then I've got a four inch circle. I've got a very simple, uh, you know, design cut in here. And again, it's important that we don't have kind of pieces inside pieces inside pieces because this is all going to get cut. And so we want to make sure that, you know, all of our design is contiguous and is going to hold its shape as we cut it on the plasma cutter. I'm going to save one more time 
It's always good to save frequently with Fusion 360. Sometimes it might accidentally crash and we don't want to lose our work. Um, so at this point now, I can come into Design and go back to our Manufacture tab. Okay. So at this point, again, I'm going to make sure that my units are in inches. So we'll click OK there. Uh, and I want to create a new setup. So I'll come to Setup and click New Setup. Okay. At this point, we want to kind of look at our, uh, our cutting type. So we are going to do a cutting operation. And so that's good. Um, and we want to make sure that our stock, if we click over here on stock, uh, we want to kind of define where we're going to be working from. And so I'm going to get, click on no additional stock. And so I should see that I've got a four inch by four inch uh, space. Okay, if I come back over to setup, next thing I want to do is I want to kind of tell it where the X, Y uh, axis is. Uh, so I'm going to kind of click on this little home icon here. Uh, I can see that my Z is up. That's very important. Uh, and if I click over here on this point, um, I can see that Y is kind of coming up the edge of my uh, design. X is going along this bottom edge of my design, and Z is pointed up. Uh, this, very, this is very important. Otherwise, uh, the machine won't really know kind of where the beginning of your design is. So at this point, once I've kind of checked to make sure that everything's in the right area, I can click OK. And we've got our very first setup. So that's really good. Now at this point then, we need to do a cutting operation. Uh, and so at this point, I can come up to our cutting tab and click on 2D profile. And it's gonna open up this particular window here. For tool, we can select here. And that should load up some tools. Uh, if we come down to library, what we're gonna find is that razor cut, plasma cutter that we had set up before. So we can click select. Okay, and that's gonna load up our uh, some of our uh, presets, uh, cutting feed rates and lead-in feed rates by default. So this is all very good. We're going to come over here to geometry. Uh, and at this point, then we're going to start selecting the things that we want it to cut. Uh, and so we're going to cut this shape and this shape and this shape. And we want it to cut this shape as well. So one of the things that we're going to be kind of looking at is when we're cutting, like where is it going to start the cutting? Um, so in this case, uh, you'll notice that these arrows are on the inside of my cuts here, and that's good. Um, we'll see why that's important in a second. Um, but when this cuts, we actually want that to cut on the outside edge, um, and that's because it's going to kind of start the cut off the shape and then begin uh, cutting into it. So we'll look at why that's important in just a moment, but you definitely want to make sure that for your outer cut that that arrow is on the outside. And the next thing we're going to do is we will come over to the Passes tab. Uh, for the sideways compensation, we'll make sure that's left. Uh, for the compensation, that's set to in computer, so that's all good. Uh, so we shouldn't need to change uh, too many things in here. Uh, at this point, we'll come over to Linking, uh, and we want to click Keep Nozzle Down. Our minimum stay down distance is uh, 24 inches. Uh, our stay down feed rate is going to get changed to 300 inches. Uh, we do want a lead in entry. Um, it can be a lead in radius of zero inches. We want to change this sweep angle to 90 inches uh, and this lead in distance to 0.1 inches. Our lead out, we don't need, so we can actually unclick this. Uh, and at this point then, uh, we should be in good shape. So if we click okay, it should take a moment to calculate all the different cuts that it wants to make. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to zoom in here, right? And I can see these little green lines, and these are going to show me where the plasma cutter is going to start cutting into the material. Okay, so now that we have uh, let it run uh, its configuration, uh, we're going to kind of see how our plasma cutter is going to come through and cut that. So if we come up here to our uh, simulate tab, uh, what we will see is it's going to kind of show us a simulation of the uh, nozzle. Uh, and I'm going to turn off the stock and turn on the toolpath. Uh, and if I hit this play button, what I can see is how it is going to come in and how it's going to cut into this shape and then over and around. And you'll notice that it's always cutting into the area that I don't want to keep. And so as it works its way around, it'll be fine. And then on this last one, you see how it starts on the outside because I want to kind of keep this circle area here. 
So once I've seen that it's successfully kind of cut through all of that, I can click exit simulation. Uh, if you get X's and things here, it means that likely um, you haven't kind of set up your file correctly or that you have like little geometry parts that are just way too small. So again, you always need to choose a very simple design um, as part of your uh, first cut. Uh, at this point then, now that I've seen it's successfully kind of cut in the simulation, I can come over to the post process. Again, I'm gonna kind of open up a post process. I'm gonna choose this fire control plasma and click select. Uh, I'm gonna give it a name. So I'm gonna call this Zane cut. Um, I wanna make sure that the IHS and THC are all already checked. They should be by default. Uh, and then the output folder, I'm going to click open. I'm gonna save it to my desktop, just somewhere really easy to set, to find. And then if I click post, it should say NC code successfully posted. That means that it didn't have any issues. Uh, and now if I go to my desktop, um, I should see zanecut.nc. Uh, and this is the file that I'm gonna put on the, uh, the lab file server, and I can go cut on the plasma cutter. And that's it.